Hey guys and welcome to this video. Today I'm giving a second chance to the new Dior Backstage Face and Body Powder No Powder and on my eyes I'm going to be using my all-time favorite Tissier Rivoli from Chanel and a lot of you have been requesting this video so in today's video I'm going to be using Tissier Rivoli. This is my all-time favorite Chanel eyeshadow palette. If you're new to my channel, welcome. I love sharing with you my honest opinion on luxury beauty products. If that sounds interesting, please make sure to subscribe. Also don't forget to check out my blog at angelavanrose.com and follow me on Instagram. If you're returning, welcome back dear friends, you are very highly appreciated. If you've watched yesterday's video, you already know that I didn't like this powder and I tested this new Dior Backstage powder for two days and I tested the powder on top of foundations. So today is day three of me testing this powder. I'm going to have a dedicated video on this powder, but I need to wear it for a few more days just to make sure that I'm going to give you a really good detailed review. So day three, I didn't have intentions to film this video, but in the morning when I woke up, I decided that I'm going to try this pow powder without any foundation. So it looks really nice and that's why I wanted to share this with you. I just wanted to share with you the whole testing process. I have the powder now. I have only one soft box here and I have one light here just to bring light to the background, um, but it doesn't have anything to do with me. And we have a lot of natural light coming from the window, so I don't have a lot of light. I want to keep it a bit harsh because that's how you're going to see really how products perform. I don't want to create that really perfect subtle lighting, studio lighting, so that because things are going to look unrealistically beautiful. I want you to be able to really see how the products work and also make sure to watch in HD because that's how you're going to see um, better the texture of my skin. Anyways, so this morning I applied this powder. So on this part of my face, I thought that I'm going to use only a little bit of primer. I used very, very almost nothing but just used a little bit of primer and this is the Dior, the Dior Skin Veil and I have a full review of this primer. I don't have sunscreen because sunscreens are usually making products, complexion products, look a little bit worse. And then on this side of my face I only have a very light serum, just a little bit of serum and then I have the powder on top, nothing else. And it looked um, really nice, I have to say. Now you can probably see that I am surprisingly pale, like I had to add a little bit of blush to bring some color. It looks beautiful, however I look quite pale. I look as if I've applied um, sunscreen and it's making my skin quite pale, so that's how it looks in, in real life. Other than that, it looks really pretty. I'm going to zoom in now and I'm going to show you. I think that a lot of people are going to actually like this powder. It is a little bit thick, so that's why I figured that the best way to use this powder is going to be on its own. It's almost like a powder foundation. And I used the Chantecaille Buff and Blur brush and just pressed into the skin. So the first 30 minutes after applying the powder, I could definitely see the texture. I could definitely see it emphasized a little bit the texture. Not too much, but just a little bit it emphasized the, some pores that are normally not visible. So it did emphasize some texture on my face. And on this side of my face, it did emphasize a lot more. So this powder is obviously meant to be used either with, with a matte, velvet matte foundation or without any foundation. And if used on top of foundation, definitely you should use a very small amount of foundation because it is quite thick. It is almost like the Dior Forever powder foundation, but it has luminosity. It reminds me a little bit of my beloved and discontinued Chanel Vita Lumiere powder foundation, but the Chanel Vita Lumiere powder foundation would give me a very natural looking, absolutely luminous, glorious finish. Whereas this one, it does look a little bit artificial um, when, when you're close to me. So when I look at my myself from this kind of distance, like one meter or so distance, it looks fabulous. But when I get closer, I can see the 
I can see the powder a little bit sitting on top of my skin. So it all depends on what you really want. I just wanted to give the update of this powder. And a lot of you were concerned that actually the palest shade is going to be too dark. It does look dark in the pan. You can see that it does look quite dark in the pan, but on my face, it made my face quite pale. So I'm wearing number zero neutral, and I think that this one is not a perfect match for my skin because definitely I need to apply a little bit of bronzer, a little bit of blusher, just to bring some color to my face. Otherwise it looks a little bit ashy. It looks like, it looks as if I've applied physical sunscreen and it just makes instantly my, my, my face look too pale and kind of a little bit lifeless kind of pale. Just when you apply a physical sunscreen, that's exactly how it looks. But other than that, it perfects the skin quite well. Now, something else about this powder. I applied the powder two hours ago and my skin was completely matte when I applied the powder, but then uh, quickly my skin starts to look oily. So this is definitely a powder that is going to be suitable for those of you who have dry skin. If you have dry skin, you're probably going to like this one a lot, but if you have oily skin, it definitely doesn't control the oil because at this point, I, I don't know, it's been only two hours and I've been at room temperature. The temperature now is really nice. It's not hot. Uh, and I have been sitting on my desk, so I haven't been performing anything, absolutely anything. My skin starts to look oily. The powder is good in terms of ingredients for those of you especially who have dry skin because it doesn't contain talc and it contains glycerin, but probably this glycerin, it contains also water. I'm going to put the ingredient list on the screen. Um, it doesn't contain it doesn't control the shine uh, for me personally. So I wouldn't recommend it for someone who has oily skin or if you have combination skin, I don't know. Um, I'm going to test it tomorrow with a matte foundation to see how it's going to hold. For now, I'm not happy with the oiliness. I really want to make it work because I love the Dior Backstage line. But I have a feeling that no matter how hard I try, I think that... I think that it's just meant to be for more of a dry skin types because I really don't like the unpleasant shine right now on my face. This is not um, currently now, this is not a glow, this is shine. And I really took a very, very good care of my skin the night before I've expo exfoliated to make sure that my skin is really super smooth, super nice to make, you know, the best of this powder. I just wanted to give a really good chance of this powder. With that being said, you should definitely um, give it a go, especially if this is not an investment, it's not an expensive powder. And if you're someone who is looking for a powder that is talc free, I think that you should give it a go. But I'm definitely going to update you in a dedicated video. Now, moving on to my all-time favorite Tissé Rivoli, I want to create a um, look that you ho you've all been asking me to create this look. I wore this look um, a few videos ago and I'm going to start with... Um, by the way, I have a video where I showed you swatches in natural light of this eyeshadow palette and also I compared it to other similar um, palettes from Tom Ford. And I'm going to start with this color here. I'm going to apply this color all over my eyelid and this is, I think, my signature Tissé Rivoli look. Almost like a signature look. So I'm going to apply this color right here. And the Tissé formula from Chanel, it's not very pigmented. I can very easily get the color here. Next, I'm going to use the pale shade in the inner corner of my eye and I'm going to drag the color a little bit further. Then I'm taking the dark shade and I'm going to be applying it only on the outer part of my eye. Next, I'm taking this shade and I'm going to be applying it on my lower lash line. 
I curled my eyelashes and now I'm going to be using a brown coal eyeliner. Okay guys, and I just applied a little bit of mascara. Probably I'm going to add a second coat of mascara and now I have to choose a lipstick. For lips, I'm going to resist the urge to use a bright fuchsia lipstick or a red lip because usually with this look, I like to use a red lip. And I'm going to be using a Gucci lipstick. I'm gonna show you now. So that's the lipstick that I'm going to use. Now, um, I look incredibly oily. I don't know if um, the camera is picking this, but it looks like just... I don't know why for some reason this powder, it is not a bad powder. I'm sure that for some people this is going to be a holy grail, but for me, I don't know why just it triggers my skin to produce oil. But keep in mind that also there is no product that <clears throat> works for everyone. That's why brands also don't have only one foundation on all, or only one powder. There is no such product like something that is universally fitting every single person. Okay guys, so this is just for swatching purposes. This is um, the lipstick applied straight from the bullet, but I'm going to remove it now. I'm going to blot a little user tissue. I just wanted to show you how it looks um, if I just apply it straight from the bullet, but I don't like it. I think that it's a little bit dark for my skin tone, especially right now. Okay, so this is how I prefer the color. I prefer it a little bit more subtle and I just only used a tissue to wipe some of the product. And that's it. This lipstick is actually matte, but it's a very velvety matte lipstick, which is something that I like. And now I don't know how the camera is going to, how I'm going to look on camera right now. I suppose that it's going to look better than it is in real life. So right now in natural light, when I look at myself, my skin looks very oily, unpleasantly oily. It's not glowy, it is unpleasantly oily. And in the morning, like in the morning, just, Two hours and a half ago, I started with a completely matte complexion. This powder triggers my skin to produce oil. Tomorrow, I'm going to try it with the matte foundation and I'm going to try and pick one of the really, really matte foundations that I have because something has to stop the oil from my face. I don't know. I think that uh, for people who have dry skin, it's probably going to feel nice and look nice and as I said once again it does contain glycerin so probably that's one of the reasons why my skin right now looks like a disco ball and it's very unpleasantly shiny I wouldn't go out like this and now I have to go out actually it is definitely more the kind of a powder foundation not really powder I think that on the body this is going to look fabulous So I only have one soft box right now and everything else is natural light. So the light is very low and you can see how it looks. My skin is really greasy, very, very oily. So I definitely feel the urge to remove that oil from my face and I'm going to blot and we are going to see what happens now when I blot. And it looks so much better immediately. I haven't done this and I haven't experienced this for I think a few years at least because my skin uh, turned into more normal and I actually didn't need to do that. In the past I was having from these blotting papers because I was having a lot of issues with oily skin but now I just have to do it. Okay, so now I think that it looks good once again and I'm having very strange experience with this powder because when I look at myself in the mirror and if I look at myself from afar, it looks absolutely gorgeous. Probably the camera also is not going to catch all of this because I've noticed, guys, that actually the camera 
loves cakey makeup, like not cakey makeup, but the camera loves when the makeup is piled on and when the makeup is heavier, usually on camera it looks better, it looks more beautiful. And that's why usually many times when I've followed tutorials on YouTube, in real life it just doesn't work for me because in real life things look different than they look on camera. So I suppose that on camera it's going to look really nice right now and it does look very nice from afar. But when I look at myself in the mirror, like when I get close, I can see the foundation. I can see, like, not the foundation. It looks like foundation, actually. Um, but I can definitely see the powder. It is a little bit sitting on top of my skin. Which, as I said, from afar, it looks absolutely gorgeous. I look like a porcelain doll. But when I come closer, or if someone is sitting close to me, they are going to see that the f I have foundation. Even though I don't have foundation, I have only the powder. So I have to see, I have to figure out a way to use it, because I really want to. I want to make it work. I'm going to be back with a full review, a detailed review, because I need to test it for a few more days, and I'm going to test it tomorrow, and after tomorrow, I'm to see how it's going to work. But right now, for now, it's not okay for me two hours after applying the powder, it's not okay for me to need to blot and to need to remove the shine from my face. It's just not okay. So to be honest, I'm not sure how to assess this powder. I'm going to have a hard time assessing this powder. Now I'm going to apply a little bit more blush because I think that I'm gonna need with this look just a little bit more blush. Bottom line, I just think that this powder is very camera friendly and on camera it looks good, but honestly, in real life, it looks good only from afar.